Okay, now we're going to do some magic together. Um, we are going to ha have a few voodoo poems. To me, this was one of the one of the stereotypes I had with Africa. Is I thought, oh, you know, there's witch doctors and and voodoo's and there's sacrificing of chickens and goats and you know killing animals in this. Um, love is magical, and we cannot explain why or how it manifests. It perplexes us. I have a series of about ten of these voodoo poems, and these range from seeking voodoo as an answer for love's existence to um, ex explaining how, how it exists, how it manifests, how you can break up and come together, even though you know you feel so frustrated, right? And, but you still come back. Um, and I think, too, that wouldn't it be nice if we could just throw some chicken bones and know if a relationship is going to work out or not? Uh, this first poem is was inspired by, I had started reading a book that was on Caribbean voodoo, just, Kind of was a pop cultural book. But I had left a tuft of hair um, in Burkina, and I was thinking about that tuft of hair in the trash. And that memory inspired this poem. This poem is, has three movements to it. It's suspicions, directly addressing the black magic, and resignation. And the title of the poem is Stages of Paranoia or Sincerity. Suspicions. My boyfriend is enslaving me with voodoo love potions. I know this is true. After having written a five paragraph letter on my grievances, after his face has faded and I am ready to leave him, I then wake up the next morning with a desire for his warm lips, desire to strongly brood. Voodoo love potions can travel the Atlantic, though I don't see how that butchered chicken's head can fly. But voodoo love potions can travel. Burned mashed spiders, remnants of my hair, chicken bones, an infant's urine, and one peacock's feather infuse in smoke to keep me gazing at this African man's photo night after night. Voodoo love potion is a real thing. Every time I try to get up to go, I am pulled and tethered back, staring into his wide smile, pausing on his full cheeks. That tuft of hair I left in my trash was fatal. I know it sounds incredible, but I did think about taking it with me packing the knotted hair in a plastic bag and just stuffing it in my suitcase. Instead, I threw it in the trash, called it powerless, and left, directly addressing the black magic. That tuft of hair left in the white plastic bag nests on the top of my brain. I wonder if your fingers found it, pulled it all up, and took it to your shelf. I wonder how you ration it out, one strand, half a strand for each, I wonder if you've combed it out to make a doll. Certainly there's a full head of a hair for a little doll. I wonder if you wind it around your fingers while praying in front of a candle. Voodoo love potions are a real thing. People often marry for them. How many strands were in that tuft? How long will they draw me back? Resignation. If my boyfriend uses voodoo on my heart, well, I know he loves me because I require a lot of spells and sacrifices. I'm one high-maintenance voodoo chick. How many times after I tell him, no, I'm not happy, we need some time apart, does he throw the chicken bones, peacock feathers, and his own hair before the crocodiles? And I come back, reinstated with love, with desire, waiting for his smile and bird dialogue. The next poem is called Expelling Love. And this poem is also a voodoo poem. And it deals with how at times we wish to be free from love. That in this phase process of love, there's this coming together, pulling apart, right? There's a fear of, of losing yourself and then um, being tethered back. So this is expelling love. Spin one acorn, still green, under a kitchen table at midnight. In the hollow of the floor, it will stop. This is your special spot. Place one bright copper penny face up on top. Blow three times over it towards west. You should feel a shudder, so sudden, shake your soul. Stunned, you won't want to move. But rise, get off your knees and rise. Turn three times clockwise with arms crossed over your heart, then leave immediately. Smile, you're standing straight for yourself. Now you're free from that external power, that black tornado whipping you round and round, always bending your spine back to his voice. 
You control your will now, hard and fast. This next poem has a different form. Um, I largely write in free verse. But this, I try a play format. So it's a poem set um, as a dialogue between two characters. It's the medicine man or the witch doctor and then the beloved Narawende. So the man, uh, Narawende. By the fire, Narawende. Love in her eyes, please, Maba, medicine man. Kneel down beside me, Narawende. Her forehead on my shoulder, medicine man. Open your hands. The falling and the cry are the same. Narawande, her whisper, her kiss, her long gaze, medicine man, give me your shadow, open your hands, places blue feathers over the fire, Narawande, make her heart mine, please, presents the woman's photo, medicine man, good, her photo in color, Narawande presents a small photo piece of clothing, medicine man sniffs it, her scent and fabric, good, Narawande, please, Medicine man, you must open, really open those hands wide. Oh, one day. Her hair lifting in the wind, I will step whole into the fire. Medicine man, Cecita, your will is strong. Oh, one day. Slumps. My voice has left me. My shadow has pinned me. Medicine man, becomes angry and gesticulates. What? A thousand goat sacrifices could not take you, but a woman? Shake, shake her power out. You must stop and stop. Do you understand? Hair or no hair? If Zizi has gotten inside, Nero one day. Her forehead, her smile. I need her for my own life. Gazes down at the fire. Medicine man scowls. The soil, the wind, rain, and sun had been inside you for years, years before her. Nero one day. Victory, magic, spell them in the ashes, please. Medicine man puts a cowrie shell in his mouth and hums, Nadira, Nadira. Narawende, draw her arms tight around my waist again. Medicine man, push away your shadow, orange over black. The fire is pushing, pushing. Her feet will be fixed, trust me. Do not fear, I have power beyond your eyes. Narawende, rooted so she won't move. Medicine man, she won't budge for hyenas or crocodiles. No, one day, implores with eyes, please, medicine man. But you on the horizon will cause every sinew in her to twitch. Trust me, I have wound all your cares and exploded them far, far above our heads. <laughs>